You know, the real numbers come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and actually, they can be classified into different types of numbers. We have integers and whole numbers and natural numbers and even irrational numbers. I want to start off by just talking about the fact that if we have a list of real numbers, we can always order them from smallest to largest. So here's a whole bunch of real numbers. Let me introduce you to all of them, and then the question is, can we order them from smallest to largest? So let's see. First, there's the square root of 3. Now, what's that? Well, I don't know exactly the size of that, but I know, for example, it's smaller than the square root of 1. The square root of 1 is 1. And it's certainly, it's certainly bigger than the square root of 1, which is 1. And it's certainly smaller than the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So this is a number that's between 1 and 2. That's all I know about that right now. Let's see what else we've got. Then I've got this decimal number, 0 0.945 stuff. All that stuff, as I go further to the right, has less and less significance. The key stuff is at the beginning. 0 0.9 tells me roughly where it is. This is just a hair under 1. So that's a number that's smaller than 1. Then I've got this one, 0 0.3 with a bar. And what that means is that that 3 digit repeats forever. This is a repeating decimal, 0 0.3333333333 forever, never ending. Looks like a long thing, but it's just around 0.3 something. Then, of course, there's the famous zero. You all know what that is. I'm not going to say anything about that. And then finally, we have negative 5 fourths. And negative 5 fourths turns out to equal in decimal negative 1.25. So now if we're going to order these things, certainly the negative numbers are the smallest. There's only one, so we have negative 5 fourths. Then we've got 0, because 0 is smaller than all the positive numbers. And then I've got these numbers. Now what comes next? Well, this is between 1 and 2. This is just a little teeny bit under 1. And this is around 0.3. So the 0.3 comes next. Then comes the 0.94 stuff. And then comes this mysterious number that we know is bigger than 1. So there's a way of ordering, of ordering the real numbers. Now, not only can you order the real numbers, but we can actually classify them. So let's take these numbers and take a look and see, well, what are they? So here's a list. And we have columns for the real numbers, the rational numbers. Those are the ones that can be expressed as a whole number divided by a whole number, or as a decimal that either terminates or is repeating. Integers, those are the numbers that are 1, 2, 3, 0, and also the negatives, negative 5, negative 16. The whole numbers, those are the numbers that start 0 and then go 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. The natural numbers that start at 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And the irrational ones, these are the sort of the mysterious ones. They're the leftover numbers, the numbers that don't fit into any of these other categories right here. So let's try and see if we can actually check off all that apply for each of these numbers. So let's start with the second one. I'm going to leave the first one for last. So 0 0.3, now that bar, remember, means that it's 0 0.3333 repeating forever. It's a real number. And since it repeats forever, this decimal expansion, it's a rational number. But it's not an integer, because there's this decimal part to the right of the decimal point. So it's not an integer. And therefore, it's not a whole number. It's not a natural number. And since it's rational, therefore, it's not irrational. So 0 0.3 with a bar is a real rational number. What about 0 0.945? Dip, dip, dip. Well, that decimal expansion terminates. It's a real number, and since the decimal expansion terminates, it's a rational number, not an integer, whole number, natural number, or rational. Zero. Zero's a real number. It's a rational number because I can write it as zero divided by one. And is it an integer? It sure is. Is it a whole number? Yeah, it's the first whole number. But it doesn't make the cut to be a natural number because the natural numbers start at one. So no dice there, and it's not irrational since we already know it's rational. Negative 5 fourths, what do we have here? It's a real number. It's a rational because it's the quotient of two numbers. It's not an integer, not a whole number, not a natural number, not an irrational number. And that leaves us to the very last one. You've been waiting for this, square root of 3. Why did I save that for last? It's a real number. And it turns out that that's all we can say for sure right now. 
But I'll tell you the secret. I happen to know, because I know a lot of mathematics, that it turns out it is not a rational number. This is an example of a number that's none of these, which forces it to be an irrational number. But why that is true is by no means obvious, and we shouldn't understand or know it. But I'll just tell you that as a little teeny fact you can keep under your hat. The square root of 3 is an example of an irrational number. Neat. Numbers come in all shapes and sizes.